Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor, welcoming you out for another wonderful show, a show that's for you and about you. Those of you that work so hard for your money, and you want your money to start working hard for you now. You want that freedom, that prosperity, that cash flow today. So you work because you want to, not because you have to, because you want to live that life of freedom, that life of joy, and not just a life of luxury necessarily, right? But you want to have comfort for yourself. But more importantly, you want to create a ripple effect as a rippler through the lives of those around you, through your family, creating a legacy that lasts well beyond you. Not a legacy of scarcity and lack, but a legacy of abundance and prosperity. And it leaks out to your community and the country and across the world. And how amazing would it be if all of us would prosper this way? So I'm excited to have you guys on here today because, again, this show has done amazing things. Thanks to you guys. You guys have been binging on this show. You've been sharing it. You've been applying the things we talk about, which I appreciate so much. So again, thank you so much for following us and being a part of this movement. As a reminder, check out our website, moneyripples.com. You know, you can get the ebook Beyond Rice and Beans. You can download there to find more resource, more cash. And also too, you know, if you've got questions for me, shoot me an email through there. So anyways, check it out, guys. All right, today, so I've got a special guest here, Ola Dantis. Now, I actually first met Ola because I was on his show. He's actually got the, the dwell-in show that he's got uh, going on as well that's really cool. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. But the thing is, like, this guy is so impressive, right? Because, you know, some of us have been born and raised in the United States for our whole lives, you know? And I meet a lot of people that feel like they don't have opportunity or they, they hope and pray that something will come along that'll work. And I'll tell you, like, Ola gets rid of all of those excuses right? And so that's why I'm excited to bring him on. Now, a little bit about Ola here. Like, as I mentioned, like he has the show, of course, but he's also the founder and CEO of Delwin.com. He has a multifamily investment syndication firm. I'll try to say that 10 times fast, right? He successfully sourced deals of over $40 million by working with closely with sellers and with other apartment syndicators across the country. Now, although he's only lived in the U.S. for about six or seven years, he has successfully completed rehab projects in the excess of $1 million. Not, not only has he exceeded his investors' returns, right, but he also has this great success in, in the multifamily space. In fact, he just closed on a 160-unit apartment deal in Houston, Texas, and another 104-unit deal in, in another place in Texas as well. And again, he does huge value adds across the country, mostly in strong metro areas across the U.S. Now, he loves working with new investors both here and abroad, even those that are international, which is kind of where Ola's background comes from as well. Now, one cool thing, too, is that his firm also aims to give back. So they have what's called a one-house pledge, where by every Christmas, they donate a house to a family for Christmas. So starting in Baltimore, for example. So in fact, he just did a recent trip to the Philippines and Bali. And he's visited the slums and now working on a local initiative to help people in need. So huge guy, like big heart. Uh, welcome to our show, Ola. How you doing? Doing fantastic, Chris. I really wish I had just put that on full blast, called my wife in here so she can hear that introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> I totally get it. People will introduce me way better than my wife will. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> That's how you keep it real. So tell us, like, you know, again, where'd you come from and why'd you come to the U.S.? Yeah, um, I, you know, obviously you got a, a fantastic podcast. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate you for, for bringing me on. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be as short or sweet as I can be. So I was born in a place called Nigeria. Many people probably know that country for several interesting reasons, but we're not going to go into that. But I actually grew up in London. That's probably where my interesting also, <laughs> I'll call it hybrid accent comes from and it's still coming from now that I live in the U.S., so obviously grew up in the UK where, you know, got my, my, my degree there, my master's degree there. You know, shortly after that, went back home to Nigeria, set up a, a firm, doing pretty okay. But my wife, who, who is Filipino, she was born in the Philippines, but also American, because she was born on a military base in America because her dad um, served in the military. So she's like, she was working in the US, even though we both went to, to school in the UK. And she's like, hey, you should come, you know, check Disney out because she was interning at Disney. This was years ago now. And so, I, you know, I jumped on the plane. You know, I was about to touch down in Florida. I was just looking. I'm a, I'm a you know, window seat guy. So I was looking out, looking at Florida. And it's just beautiful, the aerial view. I mean, you can see all this, you know, the suburbia America, you know, the Kodizaks on, you know, it was just, I was like, this place is gorgeous. You know, why didn't anybody tell me about this place? You know, obviously got to Florida, <laughs> you know, got to Disneyland. It was a happy place. Amazing. Fantastic. Anyway, fast forward, my wife and I moved 
to the U.S., I think two, three years later um, after that very first trip, you know, to try the American dream. And here we are, the American dream. We're loving it. We had a nice, fancy apartment. We didn't move to Florida. You'd assume we did. We actually yeah. chose Baltimore, Maryland. Well, it was actually Columbia, Maryland we started in. You know, in Maryland, we had great jobs. We had a fancy apartment. You know, at the time, I didn't know anything about real estate. And then a friend of mine called me and said, hey, Ola, do you want to, you know, fly and meet me in Dubai? I need you to help me with my business. So come to Dubai. I was like, oh, okay. So I did what, you know, a smart man does, a wise man. I prayed about it, obviously, and I asked my wife, like, hey, you know, my friend who's got this real estate business wants me to come and help him with his business, but he wants me to meet him in Dubai. She's like, well, have you guys heard of, I mean, this was years ago, but, you know, this is all pre-COVID, just want to put that out, this was years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, have you guys heard of Zoom, um, you know, Skype or whatever? I was like, well, maybe if I go on this trip. Maybe I'll learn something, you know, really good and cool. I mean, you know, I can use it. We can use it. The reason I'm, you know, having this anecdotal account is people can really get a context, right? It's not like this guy just fell out of the sky. Who does it think he is? I think America is the greatest place on the planet. I really do think that. And I'll come back to that later. Anyway, the reason I'm telling this story is success never comes to you as a golden box with a ribbon on it. Mm-hmm. It could come as a phone call. So be open, right? Be receptive to things that might, maybe might seem outlandish or out of the box, yeah. but that could be the beginning of your success. So that's why I'm bringing up this story. Anyway, I was on my way to Dubai, met with my friend in a just standard hotel. I was wearing like in the desert, quad bike, none of that. It was just three days, you know, with my friend and his business, which was real estate back home in the UK. So I was like, oh my goodness, if he's doing this in the UK, certainly I, you know, I can do this in the US. By the way, you know, I, didn't, I didn't mention this. I was living the American dream, go to work, come home, go to work, traffic, come home, go to work. It was just like, oh my God, is this, is this it? I'm just going to do this and die. So I was kind of having That's that dream. That's the dream we all have, right? We all, we all hope to get stuck in traffic and work all day. <laughs> you know, I was like, this, this gotta be something else. I mean, this is great. You know, we had great jobs, but it was just, so anyway, so I was like, I think this is what I've been looking for, right? A yeah. Great entrepreneur excitement. Got back to the U.S., really just went hard on, I didn't know anything about real estate. So I just asked my best friend, you know, Google, <laughs> <laughs> and I started learning, you know, a website kept, kept on coming up, Bigger Pockets. So went to that website, heard the podcast, this book kept coming up, reached out, poor dad. So I'm talking about pattern recognition here, right? Mm -hmm. So every guest was saying, you know, read this book. So I read the book. And literally what happened to me was an uppercut in my brain. Like, oh my goodness, whoever this guy is, stole my idea. Whatever this guy is saying is what I've been trying to say to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that eureka moment, right? And anyway, fast forward, bought our first building, our first piece of real estate. And by the way, we were just in the US, probably by then, maybe two, three years also. But our first building, it was a duplex in Baltimore, Maryland, in the class A area of Baltimore, because when folks here Baltimore, uh, you know, anyway, whatever. And, you know, we did that, right? This was yeah. three, four months probably after my trip back. And wow. my wife and I were having, we were at home one night, you know, kind of doing what lovers do cooking uh, <laughs> and we're having a conversation and I was like hey like my account just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and she's like me too actually so we think about like hey what did we do different we bought real estate yeah. and we had tenants in the top floor paying for most of our mortgage so now we had a new problem which is just money <laughs> accumulating yeah. now what and I now what, right? And I say this because there, there might be folks out there thinking, well, I don't know what to do. I go to work. All my money's gone. I don't know where it goes. I can't account for it. But you could house hack, right? Which is what mm -hmm. we did. You could buy a piece of property. It doesn't matter where you are in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be two doors or three or four. So a duplex, a triplex or a fourplex. You live in one and you rent the others. Right. So right. that if you're thinking, I don't have money, I don't know where to start. You could start there now. True. Just to 
throw that in there. If you have kids and you have got wives and you, you know, it, it might be a little bit tricky because my wife and I did this when it was just me and her. We could live in a one bedroom. We didn't care about parking, you know, even though you can never find parking in the city. But you, that's what, that's the, those are the things that we sacrificed in the beginning, right? right? So that's how I got into the game and I realized we're making all this money. I was like, whoa, maybe we can do this. If we did this 10 times more, we wouldn't have to go to any, we'll be bored. <laughs> we wouldn't have to go to a job, right? So that's what started. That was, in, you know, the impetus for Dwelling, our company, Dwelling.com. And I found a mentor who kind of, who went, you know, he was buying apartments. I was like, oh, that's really what I want to do. I mean, I don't have to buy 10 of these things. I could just buy a building and maybe I'll retire, right? Um, that's not how it works. But <laughs> anyway. I got a mentor and then we started dwelling and, you know, as they say, the rest is still history in the making, I guess. Yeah. The rest is history, right? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Kind of take us back again. Like what, cause I, I know with a lot of listeners on this show, like sometimes they have a fear. I mean, one, they have a fear right now what's going on in the world. Right. So they're kind of, some of them are kind of scared to get into real estate anyways. But even before this, there were still people like, yeah, but isn't it risky? What if I do it wrong? What would you say to them? So a couple of things, right? It, you know, is it risky? I don't think so. But leaving the house every single day is risky. Stepping yeah. out of your door is risky. Living life is risky, right? So right. That, let's have that at the back of our mind as I continue. I don't think it's risky because that's my opinion. I'm just one out of 7 billion people on this planet. But Another way to mitigate risk is knowledge, right? So yeah. try to go learn. You know, it's like if I talked to a friend of mine who maybe is a developer, right? I mean, like programmer, right? In IT, he's not going to know anything about real estate because he doesn't have the knowledge, right? So if you're speaking to people who, who don't know about real estate, yes, the natural thing, they're not bad people. They're just saying, oh, is it not risky? It's just a... I don't know. Is it not risky? It's not a, uh, you know, they're not technical people. So, so for you to be able to mitigate those risks is you need to understand and educate yourself about the subject matter. It doesn't matter if it's real estate or if you want to start buying stocks or whatever. So I think that's what I did. I may have skipped that in my story, but when I got back, I divulged and just binged podcasts. You know, but I really, I read a lot of books, you know, I have a big library of books and I continue to read. And that's why I said, Google is my best friend, right? So, cause that's what I do. So when you do that, that would help you to me to get that rich. What was one book that you really enjoyed? Like it really helped you a lot. So at that time it was definitely, definitely rich dad, poor dad that got me started. It's yeah. not much of a real estate book as such. People think it is. How to, Yeah. Yeah, and it's more life philosophy. But another book that really helped me was this book, right? So this is like free, just free knowledge, <laughs> investing in duplexes and traffic on cords by a guy called Larry Loftus. Well, you still see it's like at, arm, at arm's length to me, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've always got a book around. I've got another book I'm reading right here. The reason I'm doing this is, you know, people say stuff like, is it risky or can I do this? There are things that you can do to get successful. Yes. One thing is this, you have to be a reader. And I'm going to throw something COVID-19 related, you know. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates knew that we could have a pandemic that we're having today. Now, people might say, how did this guy know? Because he's a reader. Right. Of course, there's, you know, crazy conspiracy theories out there. But uh -huh. just put that aside. The way Bill Gates could predict this is because he read. Yeah. He just reads. So if you're out there, you can hear the sound of my voice and you want to be exceptional and excellent in anything you do, be a reader. But more importantly, be a divergent reader. Don't just read one topic. Be right. broad as much as you can. Interesting. I love that. And I love what you're saying about risk too, because because there's lots of different types of risk, right? There's market risk, like a lot of people worry about, but you mentioned about like education is key, right? Because if you want to lower risk, the best thing you could do is try to figure out how you can get risk within your control. How can you manage the risk? How can you reduce it yourself? And education is a key piece of that, right? Like you mentioned like, with these different books and things like that and podcasts, you know, not saying that we're, we got two podcasts that you might want to listen to to help with that, you know? 
between our between Ola's show and mine, right? But uh, yeah, to be self-serving, of course. Mm-hmm. But but it's true. Like that education is critical. Like without it, you're right. You know, because that's where I remember people would ask me all the time. They're like, "Well, it's not risky." I said, "For you, it probably would be. For me, not so much because I've got the education and training behind it." And that's why a lot of people will end up coming to me because they're like, okay, how do I get trained and educated to know what to do or how to do it, you know, or that sort of thing or what to know, like what questions to ask even, right? And I'll tell you, if, if you think real estate is risky, I mean, if you've been investing in a 401k, an IRA or any kind of mutual fund where you have zero control of any markets and it gets you mediocre returns with lots of high risk and volatility, Trust me, you're already taking more risk than any risk that Ola or I are taking right now. You know, if you're putting money in every single month, you are essentially losing money every month, putting money into something that you won't be able to get back out without, you know, asking for permission and sometimes waiting weeks to get that money. You know, like that's what happens when you put money in mutual funds or especially IRAs and 401ks, right? You know, real estate, it's like, hey, you know, if you apply the same thing, you said, well, this is how I reduce risk with my mutual funds. I, I just hold on to it forever, right? Like, it's okay because in the long haul it goes up. Well, guess what happens with real estate? In the long haul, it always goes up. You know, like it's no different. The only difference is that you don't have to keep putting money into it all the time. Right, and and then with mutual funds and some, kind of some of this intangible assets, one yeah. they're not had. You can't touch and feel them. But two, right. the beauty that a lot of people don't really get with real estate is leverage. Yes. If you want to buy a mutual fund. For $1,000, you have to actually exchange $1,000 in cash. So true. You can't, that, you know, for that value of that mutual fund or stocks or whatever. But for real estate, if you were to buy a piece of real estate for $1,000, you only have to put down 200 bucks, 20%. Like it's, it's genius. It's gold. So that the power, the leverage piece is a lot of people don't really get that. They don't really understand that. Yeah. When I was securities licensed back in the mid 2000s, right? I remember, you know, we'd have to have people sign waivers saying, I am not borrowing money to put in the stock market, right? Like, I am not borrowing money. This is not coming from a bank. You know, why are they having to sign that? Because banks won't put their own money in. Why would they want you to put their money in, right? So, you know, where with real estate, wow. it's totally different. Real estate banks are like, oh, you want some money? Here, here you go. I'll pay for most of it. You know, you put your little down payment, I'll pay the rest. You know, like, there's yep. a if obviously banks think it's less risky, why do you keep putting money in the place where banks won't put money, right? That's a good point. Yep. So let's, let's talk about like your syndication because you have a syndication that you have as well where you, you buy into multifamily stuff. Um, first, like, do you still see deals out there? Or are you being very cautious and holding back saying, hey, I know the deals are coming, but I'm not jumping right now. What's your viewpoint on it currently? Yeah, so definitely uh, transactional volume has gone down. And I don't want to get overly technical, but essentially what syndication means is, you know, pulling together, you know, a group of investors to buy an asset that you cannot buy by yourself. Right. Like so if I were to go, exactly, like an apartment building. If I were to go down the streets and buy a home, yeah, I probably could double myself. Yeah. But if you want to buy a 200 unit or 150, you definitely need, you know, a couple of partners. <laughs> at least yeah. a ton of investors anyway. So that's what syndication is. So in terms of deal flow, definitely a lot of us in this you know, syndication space are kind of taking a wait and see approach. But the fascinating thing is what we're doing at Dwelling is we're not waiting you know, for the whole country. I mean, as we know, as you know, when we record this you know, in May, early May now, some parts of the country are open for business or at least partially open and it's been phased out. But we don't want to wait for a time when the floodgates open and it's too late to get due. So we're taking a present approach and kind of looking at the daily numbers of, of new cases. Um, not only in the United States, but we track in Italy, Spain, the United Kingdom. So just yeah. to make sure that we're going into the market at the right time. A lot of mm-hmm. folks are talking about they want to see, you know, kind of two quarters of you know positive gdp growth i think that's too late because you know Mm -hmm. then confidence goes up and you're just back to where you were pre-covid so we're kind of really yeah exactly so we're really trying to time the market and to be honest with you now more than ever is when multifamily, which apartment buildings the space we're in is doing pretty well you know, not so much from an economic perspective, but really from an asset class perspective. People yeah. have to stay in place. They have to, you know, shelter in place. You have to stay in that place. So, right. yeah. Very, very true. 
So, uh, so if people wanted to like follow you more, right. Or learn more about the deals that you have and going on and, and stay up to speed on that, because obviously like things are changing at the speed of a tweet nowadays, mm-hmm. you know, like Trump tweets something and all of a sudden people go crazy, you know, so, or if health organization says something or CDC or heck anybody, the fed say something, the world keeps constantly changing. So if people want to follow you a lot and they want to, you know, be able to follow your deals or even your show, what would be the best way for them to do so? Yeah, sure. Thanks for that, Chris. So the best way is invest with Ola. So that's invest with ola.com. And that would kind of take you to our website. And then also, if you want to check out the dwelling show, feel free to do that. You know, on iTunes, teacher, we're pretty much everywhere. So for those folks out there, who are big Instagram, you know, folks, I'm on Instagram. I'm ubiquitous. You wouldn't be able to miss me. So just go on Instagram, Ola Dantes, or just Google Ola Dantes. I'm all over the place. LinkedIn, if you're into LinkedIn too, I'm, I'm right there. Awesome. I love it. Well, yeah. cool. I appreciate you being on today, man, because uh, this is such good information. And it's so good to hear a perspective of someone who, one, I mean, you really kind of kill a lot of the excuses we have, right? I mean, you come to a brand new country, you know, you work nine to nine grind almost, you know, if you include traffic, right? Or, you know, seven to seven, you know, I mean, you've done all this stuff and then you built from the bottom up. I mean, you start with individual houses all the way to buying 100, 200 type unit apartment buildings. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, that really is. So I really appreciate you sharing your experience and, and we'll put your, your information in the show notes so that people can have, you know, see investwithola.com as well as your show there. So again, thank you so much for your time, Ola. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. So, hey, everybody else, like, thanks for joining us today. Again, check out Ola's stuff, you know, and, and remember like everything, almost everything starts with your brain first. Educate yourself, empower yourself, reduce the risk and do something that actually will create great wealth now because now is as good of an opportunity as any to create amazing wealth. And so, and Ola is a perfect example of that. So everybody, I appreciate you guys coming on. Have a wonderful and prosperous week. We'll see you later. 